What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, uh, it's going to be a different kind of video. It's more like a, a story time, like I used to do uh, like a year back on the channel. Um, well, first off, we are going to pick up the Maxima's hood. I'm super excited about this. Uh, of course, we won't use the Type R to uh, pick up the hood. So I'm going to the shop. I'm going to, um, sorry, I need to shift. So I'm going to the shop, I'm going to pick up the Honda Element and uh, then we're going to FF Fabrication and they are going to give us the hood. Uh, if you've been uh, watching my Instagram account, by the way, the link's in, right there. Um, if you've been watching pictures on my Instagram account or the previous video about the Maxima, you realize that the whole front end is missing on the car. The reason for that is because that we were working, well, the reason for that is that we were waiting for the hood to arrive in order to align everything. Um, but the car is still painted though. That's the, that's the biggest problem so far. So we need to color match the hood since the car has been painted more than a month ago. But anyway, we've got the hood. There was like one guy in Eastern Canada that was able to do four inches wide louvers on a hood like this. So it was worth the wait. So with that said, we are going to pick up the element and uh, then um, I'm going to show you the hood and then a story time because I want to show you, well, I want to tell you why it took so long to build the Maxima. There's a bunch of people asking for this and uh, I feel like you deserve, hold on. And honestly, I feel like you deserve to know, little pull, you deserve to know why uh, the car is not ready yet. So without further ado, let's go to the shop. Let's go grab the, the truck and uh, we're going to have a talk. Okay, so now we are in the trusty Honda Helmet on my way to F&F &F Fabrication. Um, I'm looking forward to see the hood of the car, to be honest. Um, two months in the making. Uh, it's been a, a bit long, not gonna lie, but like I said earlier, this is the only guy that was able to do such a job in eastern canada uh within like within the three to four months um uh, time span that we had so that's a good thing uh so i'm on my way uh i don't know well i'm a bit sorry because i really wanted to share with you the process of doing such a big piece but from what I've heard, it was a, a very hard job to do. So let's go to that place, let's grab the hood, and then we are going to uh, bring that thing to Martin. One funny thing about the place who's doing my hood on my car, um, the irony is they are building vintage Porsche. Yeah, and if you've been following me for a while, you know how uh, I'm a sucker for Porsche as a 911. So yeah, you're going to see, once I'm getting uh, into their driveway, you're going to see it's an old vintage barn and that's where they are doing all their work. It's pretty dope. We are almost there. We are in the middle of freaking nowhere, but I mean, you're, you're, you're going to see the place is super cool. We're like 30 seconds away and uh, yeah, it's about, if I remember correctly, it's about here. Okay, here we go. Old Porsches everywhere. It's kind of cool. And Renaults. Okay, so I have the hood with me, as you can see. I'm going to drop it off at Martin's place. And uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm going. I'm going to drop it off at Martin's place, and then uh, we are going to. Um, have a little chat regarding what's happening with the Maxima. So we're back in the Civic Type R and I wanna have a little chat with you to, to just uh, tell you a bit more about the whole Maxima thing. Um, because over the, the course of the past 18 months, uh, there's been plenty of stuff. I mean, the car has been delayed not once, but twice. The car was supposed to, the car was intended to be unveiled May 2020 and um, then there was a lot of setbacks and when at first when we wanted to unveil the car in May of 2020 the car was supposed to a bit like the Eclipse it was supposed to be just the exterior and that's it 
Well, one good thing of the COVID situation was that we decided to postpone for a year and to concentrate on making the car accurate. But when I mean accurate, I mean a lot. And um, that's one of the good thing. And also I decided to uh, just follow the release date of Fast and Furious 9. So that could be great. Uh, I mean, if you've been following me for a while, you know that I've been unveiling a car every time there's a new Fast and Furious movie. So for Fast and Furious 7, we unveiled the Eclipse in 2015. For Fast and Furious 8, we unveiled the Jetta in 2017. And now uh, for the release of Fast 9, there's the Maxima. So you see where I'm going with this. But one of the good thing, like I said earlier, uh, about the fact that everything was delayed was that I was able to find not only the rest of the sound system for the car, but every single amplifier, the speakers, the door speakers and everything, and even the supercharger and the big brake kit, which is, for me, it's a super big deal. I'm not gonna lie. Um, at first, I wasn't really expecting to, um, to do the, the the engine setup just like you saw in the movie i was just thinking about maybe putting a vq35 into the car and call it a day anyway a vq35 is as powerful as a vq30 with a supercharger but you know for the ultimate street cred you need that supercharger and plus with the reverse opening hood it looks better let's do uh let's do a quick pull while we are entering the highway. We'll spin. I'm always having fun when I'm behind the wheel of the Type R. Of course, you need to uh, stay within the limits, but you know, <laughs> we are in Mexico. Like I was saying, uh, the Maxima, there, there's a lot of people who were complaining about the fact that um, the car was not unveiled yet. Uh, what happened? There was a lack of, of updates from, uh, from my end. Basically, we, even with the COVID situation, we started doing videos about the car, but at a very slow pace. I started in March of 2020, we actually uh, did the video, I think it was episode two. If you want to watch it, you can watch it right here. Um, I think it was episode two where uh, we were actually digging through the Bondo with a hammer and, uh, and like a pick. And we were discovering uh, all, sort of, uh, all sort of rust issues on the car. It was pretty awful. Then the third video of this series was actually in August, so a whole six months or so after. So at that point, there was a lot of people complaining about the fact that this project may never happen or whatsoever. So that's where, uh, that's where I lost a bit of interest into this build. Not that I didn't want it to do it, but I was wondering how can we make this build happen with the COVID situation and the fact that one of my main sponsor, because of the situation, decided to back out. And um, he was like the primary sponsor on this bill. So that's why we, uh, we've we put the, the project on the back burner. And what happened there? There was like a truck in the ditch. Okay, Manny, wow. Anyway, so there was a bunch of stuff that happened, but luckily we got a bunch of new partners on the build in December of 2020. Uh, we got ModFine, we got JRP, we've got a good friend of mine, Ori, uh, who's the one, he's the one who bought my clubs, by the way. If you want to follow him, I'm going to put his Instagram at the bottom of the screen. So a bunch of people that decided to help me out making this build go forward. So that's why in January of 2021, we started the big body work on the car. So tearing the car apart, um, doing the holes uh, in the, the rear quarter panel for the exhaust and everything. And that's when the project really took off. 
We ship the hood to f and f Fabrication, who doesn't stand for Fast and Furious, by the way, but uh, he did the louvers on the hood, uh, and now we are almost ready to install the supercharger. I mean, this project is going forward now, but I feel like there's a lot of you guys that were disappointed about the fact that I wasn't really giving you updates on this build. Um, I'm a bit sad about it. I, I hope you don't mind. I'm trying to do my best to get this car done for the release of Fast 9, June 25th. I'm, by the way, I'm still debating on do I unveil this car on the 20th anniversary of the franchise or on June 25th at the release date of Fast 9. I'm still debating. I'm still not sure of what I want to do. Let me know in the comment down below what would be the best, June 22nd or June 25th. So with that said, guys, um, I hope you liked this video. It was a bit different. It was just like a little, you know, conversation video with you just to give you a heads, a heads up on what happened so far and why it got delayed by so much. So guys, uh, let me know also in the comment down below, what would you like to see in the uh, upcoming videos? It's gonna be interesting because in the next video, we are going to install the supercharger on the Fast and the Furious Maxima. That's pretty dope. So I see you in the next one, guys. Bye.